don't have my mic in front of me. <laughs> Let's try that again. Hello and welcome to today's episode of Daily Space for January 4th, 2019. My name is Dr. Pamela Gay and I am here to put science in your brains. It's a slow news day. It's kind of one of those weeks where I think that uh, science production is getting greatly slowed down by all the scientists geeking out over what's going on with the OSIRIS-REx mission, the New Horizons mission, the Chang'e mission, um, and we've talked about those already. So what I'm going to do instead today is give you a preview of what to expect next week during the American Astronomical Society meeting in Seattle, Washington. This is one of those grand meetings of our societies around the world. The American um, Astronomical Society hosts this meeting twice a year, and the winter meeting is by far the largest of the two meetings each year. Seattle is one of the favorite locations, and while it's never quite as big as the Washington, D.C. meetings, they were, were being the optimum word, expecting about 4,000 people for this meeting. Now, unfortunately, with the current government shutdown, we are getting word that a large number of people on the order of several hundred won't be able to attend the meeting. So they're actually doing something that I really, really want to commend them for. They are doing everything they can to bend their own rules to make sure that, well, even if the scientists can't be there, the science will go on. So here's the quandary that a lot of scientists are currently dealing with, and this was highlighted on Twitter this morning by Jen Rigby. Uh, the issue is that normally us scientists, we're kind of like the spice miners in the movie Dune or the book Dune. The book is so much better. Go read the book. Um, like those spice factories, we work up until the very last second when we're about to get eaten by the worm. And this is how we kind of get everything done, except for us, instead of getting eaten by a worm, we're getting eaten by a deadline. And so we work right up until the last second to get something as perfect and precise and scientific as we can. This means that on those years that I'm going to the Astronomical Society, meet the American Astronomical Society meeting, well, it's the Friday before, I would still be working on my poster and looking up just how late I can print that and still be able to make my flight. 
And sometimes I'd be looking up just exactly how hard it would be to print it where the meeting is and pick it up before I have to present. I try to avoid that. I don't always succeed. So normally in those days between Christmas Day and the first day of the conference, that's when all of the presentations get written, prepared, put together. Our families hate our guts. This is a meeting that destroys the holidays, but we get it done. Now, the thing is, with this year's government shutdown, which started the Friday before Christmas, when everyone would normally be starting their posters, the message went out that people aren't allowed to use their government email addresses. They aren't allowed to use their government computers. They aren't allowed to do work even as volunteers. This means that if someone's a government employee and they're supposed to be presenting four posters next week, they're not allowed to go to the conference and they're not allowed to prepare the work. Now, that latter one, I suspect a lot of people are going to break because F it, the science goes on. But the other one is a lot harder, and the American Astronomical Society meeting normally has rules stating that must be present to present. This means that you can't have somebody else hang up your poster at the conference. You can't have somebody else give your presentation. And there's always been exceptions. There's that person who at the last minute can't get the visa to come to the U.S. to present. There's that person who breaks an arm, gets the flu, can't get there to present. And small exceptions have always been made. This year, they're just coming out publicly and saying, you know what? We're going to let second authors present. We're going to let third authors present. If there is a collaborator on your poster who can be at this meeting, they can present. So kudos to the American Astronomical Society for realizing the problems they were going to be dealing with, the scientists were going to be able to deal with. And yes, um, due to the government shutdown, anyone who is a scientist who is affected by the shutdown, who is furloughed, on break, on leave, whatever, they can't present their results, they can't travel to the conference, they can't even check their email. And this is another thing that I have to say kudos to the American Astronomical Society for, is they recognized so many researchers right now can't even access their work email. And so they're asking people, hey, take this email we wrote announcing these changes that we're creating and post them on Facebook. Send them to the personal email addresses of the scientists in your lives. And um, let's do what we can to keep things going. And for those people who were registered for the conference and can't attend. So because of the shutdown, there are people out there that paid six, seven hundred dollars um, it's like $650 registration fee. I don't know precisely for this meeting, but that's pretty normal. They paid their registration fee, which is huge. They bought their airplane tickets already, most likely. And now they're not allowed to use any of that because of the government shutdown. And AAS is going to, for those individuals, stream out what they can to the conference, the plenary sessions, the, the, the bits and pieces that they have the bandwidth. Those are going to get streamed out to the world. So this is what we've got going on. And I just want to say hats off to AAS for making it possible for so many people to still get their research results out into the world. Now, we uh, aren't going to be covering this meeting the way we have in the past because of our own funding cuts. I will be sitting at home, but I won't be twiddling my, my thumbs. The AAS does provide press coverage uh, where we can call in, we can watch over a live stream, those um, press conferences going on that take place quite often two or three times a day. I will be covering those. Um, we will be sharing them out as best we can. I need to talk to Rick and see if I can co-stream them here. I don't know if I can, but I'm going to find out. Um, and even if I can't, I will be providing you live commentary of what's going on. Binaria Blaze is going to be there with uh, her um, 
colleague, Pat Durrell, who's one of our scientists here at CosmoQuest working on the planetarium um, resource development side of things. They don't have a laptop powerful enough to stream but they will be giving us all sorts of live feedback. And I'm really hoping that Annie will shoot us back some photos and videos. There are restrictions on where photos and videos can be taken. So of course we will be doing everything we can to follow embargo and follow the rules of the conference while spreading the science. This is, as has been pointed out, the, the Super Bowl of science. Um, and I see the question, have I ever twiddled my thumbs? Oh, I've twiddled my thumbs many times, but it's always been to make a point. Um, so, so this particular conference is often the very first place a student presents research. It's the place where um, a senior undergraduate goes to try and meet faculty from that graduate school they want to go to and try and weasel their way into one of those elusive seats. It's the place you go to interview for your postdocs and try and find that next new job in your career. It's the place you go to present your satellite and sit at a booth talking about the science your mission will create. It is a meeting that is for the young and their mentors, but it's kind of a wild ride between all the publishers and all the missions. But again, this year, government shutdown. This means that the exhibit hall just might be kind of quiet and devoid of missions. So yeah, yeah. Um, Larry, I'll talk to Annie. I'll see what's possible. Um, not possible. <sighs> so, yeah. Sorry, I just got very distracted because there is a stink bug perched on the end of my power cord looking like it's getting ready to invade my laptop. Anyways, that's what I know. That's what I've got to share. We will have more news than we know what to do with next week. So today's a slow news day. Let's celebrate and prepare for next week. I will now answer as many of your questions as I can while hoping that the stink bug doesn't decide it needs to do anything stinky. And um, yes, Paranor, MU69, 2014, MU69 has been determined to be red. It is roughly the color of Sharon. Um, this is exciting. So um, if there are any more questions, as is being said, please tag me in the chat. This is a production of the Planetary Science Institute, working in collaboration with Youngstown State University. We are here to bring you science, and most days I'd say go check out CosmoQuest.org, your place to do science, but we're in the middle of some pretty amazing upgrades, so it's currently still in maintenance mode. We're going to fix that as soon as we can, but we're taking our time to make sure we do everything right. So stick around here, check out Discord. We are still here to bring you the science, even if our website isn't fully there right now. We are supported by you. This is a project that currently doesn't have federal funding. So we are here thanks to you. And I have to say once again, thank you so much for everything you've given. You have bought us time to get through, well, these times that are tough for science. And we are going to do everything we can to stay here and to make you proud. So if you can, give us a subscription. And every bit really matters. Every dollar donated really matters. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do. And hit me up with your questions. Henny's Vorverp is asking, have you heard from Yov about when Space IL will attempt their moon landing? He's not actually going to be able to tell us until they're like just about ready to go. There's all sorts of weird restrictions, as there always are with missions like this. Um, let's see what other questions are out there. Um, so, so Paranor is asking, do we know when there will be more data released from New Horizons? No. Um, we do know that they're going to work very hard to get us things 
in compressed JPEG format pretty much as soon as they come off the spacecraft. Uh, they are saving those raw images for themselves so that they can get some data out. Hello DPI 209. Um, there will be a recording of Astronomy Cast later today at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. That's 8 p.m. London time. Today we are going to be discussing direct imaging of extrasolar planets. So tune in and catch that over at um, YouTube. Um, I think Susie may be able to drop something in the chat. Um, other things to check out. So Hanny Zwerver um, is asking, do we have any inkling of what will be presented? I, I expect there to be gravitational wave results. I expect there to be dark energy mapping results. Uh, there is almost always a new, the Milky Way is eating a dwarf uh, spheroidal galaxy result. There is almost always a astronomers have finally figured out why the corona is hot result. Um, I may just be putting together bingo cards so that we can play press conference bingo. Uh, so let's see what else we have. Um, so, so Larry is asking if Annie can do a uh, voice like in the old days. She and I will get together and figure out just what is possible and we'll do everything we can. Um, uh, Iron Heart has an asterisk se separate. Let me scroll up and see if I can find the rest of the idea. Um, I am being confused by chat. This is not always surprising. I am often confused by chat. Um, it seems that my recent events may have broken. Let me see if I can find out what's going on. Okay, I, I will just be confused. Um, Paranoid is, is saying, I believe Ironheart was saying that um, because I missed the space for the URL. Oh, okay, yes. Um, so Hanny Zorvrup is asking, is the Europa Clipper mission a go or not? It is go. Um, it is unclear whether or not it will have a lander. It is unclear when it will be go, um, but the mission team is still working on it. If you want more information, um, I encourage you to follow Planet Doctor on Twitter. She is a, a very active scientist who does active communications of science and often talks about that mission. Any other questions out there? Otherwise, I'm just going to keep today short and I'm going to be working on madly trying to get things out the door to all of you in terms of getting our CosmoQuest site put together. As always, just to say it once again, this is a production of the Planetary Science Institute working in collaboration with Youngstown State University. We are here most Mondays through Fridays to bring you science. Uh, check us out um, on YouTube if you miss us live. We do archive all of these shows, typically the same day they go, they get recorded. And we are always here as your resource for keeping up to date with all that is new in space and astronomy. And if you are watching this over on YouTube, you can catch us live. Like I said, most Mondays through Fridays, we record at noon central, 1 Eastern, 10 a.m., 10 a.m. Pacific. That is 6 p.m. London time. Thank you so much for the bits, Veronica. Um, yes, you can have my Etsy page again. Um, so for those of you who don't know, as a human being, I am a space artist and you can find my art as well as my husband's woodworking over on Etsy. Um, so yeah, anything else, preferably slightly more scientific. Um, not seeing anything. 
So thank you all for being here. Let me see who is out there that I can potentially raid. There is an entire community of people out here trying to communicate science and other educational topics on Twitch, and I highly encourage you to check out all the other streamers from Paul Matt Sutter, who works closely with us, to Skylius, who gives you a very adult perspective on space. Um, we're all here. We're all just trying to put information into your heads. You can find us find us all on two different discords. There's Brain Bites to go with the Brain Bites community. Uh, and then we also have uh, the Knowledge Fellowship, which is a discord of educational streamers. Um, so I am seeing that Demon Machine, who streams about Auto Mechanics is live. Let me see who else is currently up. Um, sorry, pardon while I st while I scroll. So we are live. Um, oh brother, are you currently live? So there is someone streaming about fonts right now, getting ready to um, put new fonts into the world. So um, I'm more of a font person than an auto mechanics kind of person. So why don't we raid on over to O oh Brother once I find the raid features. Okay, I'm just going to do this the lazy way through chat. So um, I'm going to run the credits and then raid over to O Brother and give him a fabulous, friendly welcome. And um, be you may be in this world and get outside and look up. Thank you so much for being here and um, I will see you all on Monday. Mm -hmm.